Hello, and welcome back to the Cracking Fang YouTube channel. Today we're going to be solving lead code problem number two, add two numbers. If you haven't already seen my video about how to do the problem add strings, I'd highly recommend that you go watch that video because the algorithm that we're going to use is going to be extremely similar. This problem is basically the same question, with just a little bit of a twist in that we're using linked lists instead of strings. So that being said, let's read the question prompt. You are given a you are given two non-empty linked lists representing two non-negative integers. The digits are stored in reverse order, and each of their nodes contains a single digit. Add the two numbers and return the sum as a linked list. You may assume that the two numbers do not contain any leading zeros except the number zero itself. And let's look at an example. So if we were given this linked list, two, four, three, and linked list number two, five, six, four. When we add them, we should expect, you know, two plus five is going to be seven. Four plus six is going to be 10. But then since we have to carry the one, so this becomes a zero, and then we carry a one here. And then four plus three is seven, plus the one that we carried is eight. So that's how we get the final answer of 708. And remember that, you know, it's, it's reversed. Um, so it's really 807, right? Because it's reverse order. Um, but we just return the linked list. So let's think about how we might solve this problem. Okay, so we read the question prompt and we went over the example. Let's think about the algorithm we want to use to solve this. Remember that when we did the two strings problem, we were extracting the element that we needed to add by looking at the index of you know either i and j where i was pointing to the the first string and j was for the second string well in this case we have a linked list so we can't use that solution because obviously linked lists are not accessible by index we have to use the you know dot val and then call dot next to get to the next element so what we want to do is you know we'll be given linked list one uh, and we'll be given linked list two. And what we want to do is we want to add the values of whatever, you know, the current node is. So we'll say, you know, L1 dot val plus, you know, L2 dot val plus whatever our carry is, right? Because we have to account for the fact that we may have had a value over 10 for the previous sum. Now, you know, this works fine, assuming that we're able to access this dot val here. What happens if L1 or L2 is, you know, none? Basically, we have extinguished the linked list. So we called dot next on the last node, which obviously points to null here. Uh, so if we try to call dot val on that, you know, we won't be able to because null items don't have a dot val value. So in that case, what we need to do is similar to what we did with the strings problem in that if our index was less than zero, then instead of you know trying to access it and blowing up our code because we can't access that index what we want to do is say you know if if l1 um then you know use l1.val so we'll say l1.val else we'll just take a zero so similar to how we were using um you know the index parsing it if the index was valid otherwise we were just using zero and we're going to do that to parse out the entire um, list here so the approach is basically going to be the same as what we did in that problem and then instead of you know moving the indexes down what we're going to do is we're just going to call dot next on our linked list node to get the next node and we're going to do this while we have something left to process and we're still going to handle the carries in the same way our sums are still going to be you know modulo 10 to extract that ones value and we're still going to be integer dividing by 10 to get our carry let's go to the code editor and hopefully all of this explanation will make sense once you see the actual code and it's really simple to implement so i'll see you in the editor we're back in the editor let's write the code so the first thing that we want to do is actually check our base cases in which uh, the nodes given to us are actually empty. So we'll check the case that actually both lists are given to us as empty lists. In this case, we don't have anything to sum. We don't have anything to return. We should just return an empty linked list. So what we're going to do is we're going to say if not L1 and not L2, so basically both of them are null, we're just going to return none because there's nothing we can do here. In the case that one of them is only null, we're going to say L if uh, not L1 or not L2, so this is the case where one or the other is null, then we're simply going to return the one that isn't null uh, because there's obviously nothing we can sum. We can't add 
you know, an empty linked list to a linked list, nothing would happen there. Otherwise, let's do our um, solution here. So, it, like in the previous uh, version of this problem where we did it with strings, we need to keep track of the carry. So let's define a variable for that. And this time, we have to return a linked list. We can't just return it as you know uh, a list like we did in the previous solution, and then we would concatenate it, return it as a string. We have to return a linked list. So let's set up a linked list to hold our result. So we're going to say res is going to equal list node, and we're going to set it equal to zero. And then typically with these problems, what we do is we create a sentinel node to basically hold the reference to the start of our list. That way we can return sentinel.next um, when we are done, and then that would just return the linked list. So we'll say sentinel equals res. And now we've set up everything that we need to set up before we can actually start doing the problem. So now what we need to do is we need to loop through the linked lists and basically go until both of them are exhausted and do the summations. So we're gonna say while L1 or L2, so basically while one of them is still not empty, we're going to say L1 val is going to equal L1 val if L1. Remember, we can't call dot val on a none object because obviously none objects don't have a dot val property. So, you know, our code would blow up. So we have to make sure that L1 is valid. If it's not valid, AKA it's null, then we can just treat it as if it was zero because remember adding zero to anything doesn't change the computation it stays the same it's basically a no op so we'll say if l1 else zero and we'll do the same thing for l2 so we'll say l2 val equals l2 dot val if l2 else zero now we need to calculate the sum so we'll say cur sum equals l1 val plus l2 val plus whatever the carry was from the previous computation and then we're going to say res.next is going to be a new list node whose value is going to be cur sum. Oops, this should be list node. Uh, list node modulo 10 to extract that ones digit. And then we need to take care of the carry. So we're going to say carry equals to cur sum integer divided by 10 to get that ones digit. And then what we need to do is we need to move our L1 pointer forward. So we're going to say L1 equals to L1.next. If L1, right, we can't call dot .next on a null object. So if it's non-null, then we'll just call L1.next. Otherwise, we'll just say L1 equals none. And we're going to do the same thing for L2. We're going to say L2.next uh, if L2 else geez I can't type this morning uh, else none and we're gonna say res equals res dot next to move our result forward so that way the next iteration we can append um, our value correctly cool so at this point the while loop will go until either l1 or l2 still has values and then it'll terminate when both of them are null now what we need to do is just check that we don't have a carry left over if we do we need to add that to our solution so we're going to say if carry, we're going to say res.next equals to list node. And we're going to say whatever the carry value is. And then at this point, we are done. We can simply return sentinel, which remember the sentinel, we set it equal to, you know, the, the res. So that way, when we call sentinel, uh, so we can simply return sentinel, oops, sentinel.next to <clears throat> return our result right because the result was just like an empty list so that means that we're going to start you know the next value is going to be the start of you know the, our answer so that way we can just return sentinel.next and we'll get our result list here so let us delete this because it won't give us a syntax error and submit it make sure that it works and when we do oops and uh, did i misspell it oh okay sentinel all right there we go can't spell today apparently english is not my first language okay <laughs> so we see that it works and this is going to be the solution let's think about the time and space complexity here so <clears throat> time complexity similar to the add strings problem we're going to have to parse out the entirety of l1 and l2 so that is going to be big o of n plus m where n is the length of l1 and m is the length of l2 and then similarly for the um space complexity it's going to be 
big O of n plus m. So that is our runtime and space complexity. And we have at this point solved our problem. So if you enjoyed the solution, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe for more videos. Happy elite coding.